Okay, should I just get started? We good to go? All good? Okay, what's up? I'm Austin Griffith. Uh, thank you for the organizers for putting this together. Thank you for all the homies getting the mics right and whatnot. Really, really appreciate that. Maybe a live stream going on. Thank you for all of this. Uh, I work at the EF. I'm more like supported by the EF and Build Guild, but I don't really speak for the EF. Uh, if you're wondering, yeah, I'm not that guy. I'm very low on the food chain, more like supported by the EF. So uh, my, my main job is really cool. I have a really cool job. <laughs> my job is to teach developers uh, how to build and uh, I'm always thinking about what the experience is going to be like for a developer coming in. I'm thinking about tooling and education uh, and then helping them build cool things. Uh, my, my main focus is just education and onboarding. Everything else is kind of a combo move and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, the main builds, uh, we have Scaffold ETH, which is a tool for building apps and tinkering. Uh, Scaffold E2 just came out a while ago. It's kind of a modern, modern tech stack for building apps. Uh, around Scaffold ETH is Speedrun Ethereum. Uh, and that is a uh, curriculum that will take you through kind of a lot of the aha moments as you, as you learn how to build on Ethereum. And uh, we'll, we'll get into that in a little bit more. And then there's the Build Guild, which is kind of like the incentivization layer around all of that, uh, providing we, we, we said developer UBI, but I feel, I don't know, UBI is kind of a bad term. I don't know. I feel like it's, it's, it's politically loaded a little bit. But we provide funding in terms of grant streams to developers to remain more like a free agent instead of getting captured. But we want them to get it captured eventually by companies or even better, like build their own and build their own product. Let's see if I can type a password into MetaMask here. Ooh, is that going to work? Okay, so uh, today I'm going to start with one of those combo moves we were talking about where we're focused on education and onboarding, uh, but a lot of the guys and girls that come through Build Guild are always creating new things. They're kind of building their own builds, and uh, one build that I want to play with is this event wallet that we're working on. So this is, this is ETH build, by the way. This is uh, an old way to kind of show off how right here I have a mnemonic here and I'm getting the fifth index of that to make a private key. And then I'm using that. It looks like I was just speaking at CSU, the local university. Uh, but I was showing how you can use a key pair to sign a message and recover it. Uh, that's, that's a different topic. What I have today is this. This is a QR code. So if you shoot your camera at this QR code, you're going to get uh, a game wallet, which is this. Is it big enough? Let's see. See if I make that a little bit. No, it's kind of like all over the place. Definitely get in on this because I need more players. So you'll scan this and this should take you to something built with Scaffold ETH 2 by uh, my homies McToady and Damu and uh, you should get a wallet. And you uh, will sign in. You can put in a username, uh, put in your ENS name maybe. I'm just gonna put in Austin here and I, I'm gonna be kind of like the, the game master so I'll have more tokens. But you can go ahead and put in your name and get checked in. And then I'm going to use a distribution script to, ooh, shadowy figure is up first to send out some tokens and some gas, and we'll play a little trading game while I'm doing the, the rest of my talk. So, so let's make sure we got that. That QR code, I wish I could like stick that up. I should have brought like a piece of paper so I could stick that up somewhere. This QR code gets you a wallet, you'll check in, I'll drop you some funds, uh, and then we'll play a game where we will trade shit coins. <laughs> Product market fit for Ethereum. Uh, <laughs> uh, what, oh, I think I checked in. It, huh, I wonder if maybe we're having internet problems. Let's see. You'll, you'll check in and then I'll YOLO you some funds and then uh, you'll be able to trade on a DEX. I'm not seeing anybody get checked in. I'm wondering if there's other problems. Are you guys able to check in with your phone? You're checked in? Okay, cool. Yeah, you guys got the trade? Okay, so maybe it's just this screen being slow. Let me give it a reload. 
Cool. I'll get the I'll get the funds there in a second. So this is a burner wallet built with Scaffold ETH2. Uh, the underlying infrastructure. There's three different DEXs that are deployed. Those three DEXs uh, are going to use this uh, kind of credit token, and then you can trade uh, on the DEXs uh, using burner wallets. We'll we'll let that reload. Okay, so this is just like kind of a thing to play with while we're talking, and it just kind of shows off the technology that we're working on. So uh, also, I'd like to get a build going of Scaffold ETH and show you how to tinker with the tool. And I'm gonna show off a different, uh, so Scaffold ETH is that uh, prototyping stack that I was talking about, but what I'm gonna show here is MPX create ETH. This is kind of like a starter for Scaffold ETH. Uh, and yeah, I tested the Wi-Fi earlier, but uh, I think I'm just gonna make like a click the button game or something like that, right? This would be if you are a, ooh, is that a hotspot? Oh, okay, I, I, think it's, I think it's other people. I don't think it's me. I think it's, it's not me, it's you. I think it's, uh, I think it's my system here and the way it's loading, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry. Thank you, Soren, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, we'll, we'll let that load. Uh, but what I want to do is install uh, this. So I did an MPX create ETH, and then I'm just going to make a project called Click the Button. You'll notice here I have the choice between Hard Hat and Foundry, uh, and then we'll get that started. It'll take a little bit, but this scaffold ETH, uh, this MPX create ETH, this is for tinkering, this is for getting uh, used to solidity, uh, this is for kind of learning how to, to build and uh, tinker. Let me, let me uh, start our fire up the DEXs. So they'll start, basically what we have is, uh, oh, he said 20 people have checked in. Okay, uh, it's just not loading for me. Okay. Maybe this will load, let's give it a second. Okay. You shouldn't, no. What you should see is that uh, this page here, oh man. Yeah, maybe I do need a hotspot because my check-in's not working. Oh, there we go. This is what you should see. You should see kind of uh, some avocados and some bananas and some tomatoes. Those are our, our tokens. And then there's a credit token here. And I will drop you those tokens uh, as I get it to load here. Let's see if it's, I, I kind of have a couple of these things just so if something doesn't work, we can kind of work through other stuff, but let's let this checked in thing, see if that loads. Okay, oh, and this is it's still installing anyways. So what I'm gonna do is install the full stack for creating your own app and also basically set up a, the ability to tinker. And this is kind of a very powerful thing for a new developer when you're getting into the space. Solidity is hard, but it's not that hard. If you're a coder, you can pick it up pretty easily, but what you need is an environment where you can try things and get feedback. And so that's what Scaffold ETH kind of starts as. It really is a, a starter kit, and it's, it has a bunch of buttons and UI and a bunch of things that will help you, and I'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, but really, it comes down to that first little bit of tinkering and setting up. Okay, I think since mine's not loading, I think there are some other guys uh, watching the chain and maybe they will start uh, sending you guys some salt, but I'll keep, no, not salt, salt was our credit token, but now it's just money, money there. Okay, so you'll get the credit token in a little bit and then you'll be able to start buying and selling. You got, you're starting to get credits? Okay, yeah, it's working. It's working. Yeah, yeah, okay, so now you wanna buy low and sell high, right? And those assets are gonna fluctuate. There are DEXs on Gnosis chain. Um, there's a credit token. You should get like 25 credits and then you can buy and sell the tokens as they fluctuate in value. It really is just for fun and I'll kind of explain what we're, what we're doing with that in a second, but mostly just to be, to, to be fun here. Okay, so while that's going, I'm gonna assume that people can, can start trading. I'll have a leaderboard here that will show it, but probably not. And damn, still waiting for these dependencies to install. Maybe I, what's that? You're buying and selling? Good, that's, that's good. That, that means it's working. Uh, let's see, maybe our leaderboard is up. I can see, uh, nope. Okay, so as soon as this MPX create lands, uh, let's let's maybe even 
uh, click the button, right? And let's get the code up and we can kind of look at it. Okay, so when you do an MPX create ETH or you clone down scaffold ETH, you will get uh, something similar to this where we have uh, Foundry and Next.js, basically your back end and your front end, right? And uh, in here, we can get in and look at our smart contract. There's just gonna be a basic smart contract here that has kind of a, you know, a handful of different concepts already here, kind of showing you how events work, how mappings work, how the constructor works, how a modifier works. Uh, kind of a as a coding person, if you're a COSI student, make it bigger or something? What's the question? Uh, both, it, either, it's your choice. Yeah, so sorry, when I was back here, I was asked the question, do you want to use hard hat or foundry? And I picked foundry, but you can use hard hat also. It, it uses either one. And it kind of abstracts that away. You do a yarn compile, a yarn deploy, and it's going to use whatever uh, frame, framework to do that. We're still waiting for it to install, but I've got a contract here. And I think I'm just going to make like a simple, like click the button kind of game. So maybe I'll put in a uint 250. Ah, I kind of want to have the front end before I do that. Okay. I, I can move on and we can talk more about stuff as this is installing. So um, I do dev growth at the EF. And dev growth is kind of a nebulous term. It's kind of, luckily the space is so decentralized. There's tons of other people in the space doing dev growth that if you were to go to Twitter and say, you know, how did you get into Ethereum? You would hear crypto zombies. You would hear uh, scaffold ETH or speedrun Ethereum. You would hear Ethernaut. You would hear you know a handful of different people and apps, and and it's just it's so cool to see that in a Twitter thread of all the different people that are bringing people in. So I'm really just a small piece of that. I'm kind of just helping to nurture that. And so uh, my strategy is kind of in three phases. I think that developers first need to tinker. They need to be able to just kind of get their footing and understand, you know, if I change this, what happens here? How do, how do I get through learning the, the syntax of solidity? And the best way to do that is, let's let that guy go by. The best way to do that is just try things. And I think scaffold ETH is a really good way to do that. Basically, uh, w once this comes up, I'm still waiting on it to install. Ouch, that hurts. Uh, maybe I could go to the, uh, let's give it a little bit longer, just, just in case this works. My leaderboard's not working either. Maybe I should jump over to a different Wi-Fi real quick. Let's try that. Let's, let's try my phone just for a second. Uh, oh, it's not even letting me do that. Oh, it's on. Oh, my, I bet my phone's on the Wi-Fi, right? And then that's probably, let's see, if I turn that off and then I go to my, oh man. Okay, uh, let's, let's not even worry about it. What I wanna show is tinkering, right? The first thing I wanna show is how you can tinker with Scaffold ETH. So I'm going to go to that testing, nope, there was, there was one called like testing the Wi-Fi or something like that. Test Wi-Fi, okay? And I've already installed everything, so I'm not gonna worry about this click the button installation because it's taking too long. Let's, let's just pretend like I just did an MPX install and I have this uh, app ready to go. Let's say yarn start, yarn chain. Yarn chain is gonna fire up the chain whether you're running hard hat or foundry and then yarn deploy is gonna put our smart contract out on that local chain. So we have a local chain running, we've deployed an example smart contract, and we have a front end that comes along with it. And here's what the front end looks like. Okay, cool, so here is scaffold ETH. You can bring this up by forking the repo or you can do that MPX create ETH thing. Uh, it has burner wallets built in. You'll notice I don't have uh, uh, MetaMask connected yet. It uses burner wallets for quick transactions for testing. Uh, let's see, oh man, it's gonna fail to connect to Wallet Connect because of, hmm. Okay, so let's see. 
tinkering. That's the key here, right? I want you to be able to tinker. So I'm going to create a uint 256 uh, count, right? Something like that. And we'll set it. Uh, it'll just start equal to one. We got to make that public and see what happens when I add this. So now if I go back over here and I do a deploy again, <laughs> oh man, come on. Okay, then we're gonna see that a new count shows up over here. Uh, let's see, where is it? It's not there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see, I'm editing, I'm back at the click the button code, aren't I? Yeah, yeah, good call, thank you. Okay, so let's bring the code up in the new repo. Let's go to the contract. Okay, same contract. Now let's add a counter here. What I wanna show is that you just add something here. There is already something called total count. So I'm gonna say times button is pushed or something like that. Terrible variable name. Uh, but there, and then if I deploy that, then we should see that show up over here in uh, this front end. Yeah, there we go. So times button has been pushed to zero, right? And then if I create a function there called push the button or something like that, let's see, will AI just take care of it, please? Nope, nope, looks like I have to build it because I think it's just the internet's not quite fast enough times pushed plus plus, right? Very, very simple code here, but showing you that you can tinker with Solidity and you can get this kind of direct feedback where as you add things, now there's this push the button button, right? And if I hit send there, it's gonna increase the times the button has been pushed. So if you were building like an ownership pattern, you were trying to you know, test something with Solidity, maybe you're looking at how much gas it costs or just trying to figure out how to get it to work, this is a really good way where you can throw stuff in your contract, deploy it locally, and then tinker with it uh, with this nice uh, UI from uh, Scaffold Ease. Okay. So you, you can kind of see how we can add stuff to this and we can uh, tinker around with it. Uh, I'll, I'll get more into that later or we'll, we'll cover some more stuff. Let's see, how's our, how's our trading game going? Dang it, I don't have a leaderboard. That's tough, it would be nice. Uh, maybe we'll try a different Wi-Fi at the end. Okay, so back to my strategy of developer onboarding starts with tinkering, getting them started with uh, you can kind of go to something like shout out to Solidity, Solidity by example. You can, oh no, get out of here. No, what was that? So you can go to something like Solidity by example. You can say, okay, I wanna learn more about mappings. You can grab a mapping, you can paste it in, and then you can tinker with it uh, in Solidity in Scaffold ETH2. And that's kind of like the first step, just being able to figure out how to tinker and kind of prove that something works or doesn't work uh, for yourself. Then, then I think the next step is, is building a lot of things. Once you can tinker with things, uh, a lot of developers start to use Ethereum like a database and that doesn't quite work, right? You, you need to tinker around and you need to build a bunch of things uh, that kind of teach you the, the aha moments, right? You need to, uh, I'm just gonna chill speed run Ethereum here. You need to build like a staking app. You need to build like a token vendor. You need to build uh, uh, something that uses randomness so you understand how randomness works. Uh, you need to build a DEX so you understand how a hyperstructure works, how someone can deploy this uh, credibly neutral contract that, has, that sets the rules, right? And then uh, people can swap, but also like, to make that swap work, people can provide liquidity. And all of that is uh, sort of different actors just uh, contributing to this system that works, but no one controlling it, right? You read more about a hyperstructure, they're very cool, and I think new developers will, it, it clicks when they, when they get that idea. State channels for scaling, multi-sig wallet for signing, SVG wallet for fun. So uh, kind of phase two of a developer's onboarding is building just a bunch of stuff and Getting, getting in the mode of shipping and learning how to do that, or, or at least like kind of figuring out the concepts like uh, DEXs and hyperstructures and even like big numbers, right? Big numbers are weird for a little bit. Uh, division, like doing decimal math in Solidity doesn't work, right? You have to understand how that stuff works. A developer needs to come in, tinker around, build some of these things to really understand how that, that works. 
Uh, one, one really good aha moment is talking about Web3 cron jobs. When a developer comes from the Web2 world, they know what a cron job is, they know how to automate things. But if you talk about a Web3 cron job, it works different, right? It's not just about a server checking in anymore. It's about creating, uh, writing the rules correctly so only one person can check in, and then creating incentives within those rules so whoever checks in gets paid, right? And if you create that kind of a system, that's, that's how a Web3 cron job can work. And we see that now in practice with Keepers and a, and a handful of other uh, Gelato, a handful of other like automated uh, protocols. So then the, the final, the third phase of the stuff that I do is kind of this, uh, my buddy Cena calls it the tour of duty. You, you really need to, uh, after you've built all of these like aha moment builds, you really just need to keep building. And, and that's kind of what Build Guild does. Build Guild creates an incentivization layer around uh, all of these other tools. And they say, okay, if you're going through the speed run and you're learning all this stuff, here's the next step, you need to go build. Uh, we have this thing called this ETH dev tech tree down here where there's this whole tech tree of things that you need to build. Oh, here, it was right here. Right there, yes, this tech tree on our website. It's like a whole, uh, just beyond speedrun Ethereum, all the things that you need to build to really get up to speed. And uh, we do that by supporting uh, high impact up and coming devs. So we're looking for devs that uh, are going to contribute and have impact within the space. And then we start giving them uh, streaming uh, kind of like a grant stream. And our streams work different than a typical like Sablier stream or other streams that you might find uh, in the Ethereum ecosystem. The way these streams work is they are withdraw. So you, you withdraw and you turn in something. They start full and you withdraw from them. And then the meter runs and kind of fills it back up. But once it's full, it's paused. And the reason is we have a lot of contributors that will come in and learn some things and then go do something else and then come back and learn some more things. They're, they're kind of nights and weekends folks for a while. And so this allows us to have people that we can support uh, with grant funding with, without like streaming to them constantly. They can, they can phase in and out. And we found that that's uh, the, one of the most effective ways to do it. So uh, you, you can go to buildguild.com and you can go to the app here and this will take you to uh, the app of all, all these builders and we can go to some of these builders and we can even, oh, let me connect my wallet. Oh man, the internet. Oh man. I really should, maybe I should just uh, tether. Maybe I should have tethered. I should have used yours, sir. And maybe I can, I, I have mine too. Let me tether to mine. It's just slow enough. Yeah, see, this is now it's loading up. <laughs> I really just ha should have like a really good offline talk just because every time I try to do a demo, the Wi Fi. So now it's not even connecting to my phone. Oh, 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 okay, I'm paired, let's see. Now let's go back to our leaderboard. Oh, yeah, okay, here we go. Tomo, whoever's out there. Yeah, all right, all right, we've got some players here. Nice, this is good to see. Okay, so yeah, keep, keep trading on your shitcoin trading game. Good, good work, guys. <laughs> okay, uh, let me see if I can go back. So this is the Build Guild, and these are builders within the Build Guild. And if I go click on just whatever, you know, the random one at the top here. This is Name. Name is working on multisig.lol, which is a kind of a, a, a multisig that you can fork that helps uh, not only just understand how you gather signatures and turn them into a multisig, but also like it's an application you can use. It's not nearly as good as the Gnosis Safe, of course, uh, but it's, you know, a, an alternative. And you can see here that Name has built up his profile. You can see that he's built all sorts of things and he's kind of turned them in here to the point where if he were going to get a job at some place in the space, he could go here. Like here is all the things I built. And someone can get in here and see like, oh wow, like a whitelist, uh, uh, a Luxo chat, nice. The challenges, multisig.lol, uh, some ZK sync poll, just a bunch of just like web three builds and and this is kind of like the third phase 
where I'm involved. This is, this is where uh, we stream to you, you build lots of cool things, you're kind of getting grant funding, it's not like a salary, it's like a grant to kind of keep learning and keep building. And this gets you kind of into that shipping mode and it also builds up your Web3 portfolio. So let's see, let's see if we can get this app going. I, I, my, my push the button app is not going very well here. Let's see, uh, uh, is it deploying? I think what I wanna build is a small little front end and show a little bit more uh, about Scaffold ETH. Yeah, okay, so we're deploying. This looks like it's working. I, I feel like maybe we're going faster now. Let's, uh, let's go back here. Okay, so let's build just a tiny little bit of React too. If you've ever built apps that people use, you'll probably spend 20% of your time writing your smart contract and 80% of your time writing React, which is super sad, and that's just kind of how it works right now, but that's how uh, building things that get users will work at the application layer, right? This is kind of a protocol infrastructure level talk. I, it's awesome that they let me come talk here, but I'm a little bit higher up uh, in, the, in the stack. So what I wanna do is go to our React stuff, and basically, I'm just going to make a button that shows the count, but it shows kind of you how you can go from I'm tinkering, I'm adding things to my smart contract and, and testing how it might work to I'm deploying and uh, pushing a real product out there. So let's go to our next JS and let's go to public or pages and index. And then I'm just going to clear out a bunch of stuff out of here. How was that? Pretty good. And then hello world, hit save. Let's see if we get uh, kind of a hello world over here. Whoops. So I'll go to my index page. There we go. So we've got a hello world. Okay, so we use wag me and VM. Uh, I'm going to use a hook here to, uh, let's say const. I'm going to use a scaffold ETH hook. So use scaffold contract read. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read from our smart contract and I'm going to get the, what's the function name here? Uh, times button is pushed, right? Yeah, 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 that's what I'm looking to, looking to read here. Okay, and if I hit save there, there should be some data that comes in. Uh, pushes is what I'm gonna call it. And then let's just put uh, pushes here. And then let's see if we get, the, oh, get back here. See if we get that in our UI. Hit save. Uh-oh, doesn't like. What doesn't it like about that? It looks good. Maybe I need to go like two string or two number or something, huh? Let's see. Yeah, maybe one of those. There we go, okay, so we have zero pushes. And then if I go back to debug my contract, and I make a couple function calls on that. Push the button, one, two, three. There we go, we should see pushes, and if I go back here, yeah, pushes it at three. Okay, so let's make a button here that lets us increment that too. I love, <laughs> love that we're like at this like low level infrastructure talk, protocol burg is so cool, and I'm building a button that increments a counter. <laughs> But this is, this, is, uh, this is the user facing stuff. This is the application layer. This is where, uh, this is how you get users. So let's see, I want to create a button. I'm gonna style the button. Yeah, let's see. Uh, there and say push it. Yeah, hit save, do we get a button? Yeah, now we get a button. Okay, and then on click, what are we gonna do? On click, we're gonna call something. We're gonna call a, we'll get to that in a minute. We're gonna use use scaffold read. So if I do const, now I'm gonna use a different hook, use scaffold contract write. Okay, and that's formatted the same way. It takes in an object. We can see that from the TypeScript stuff. There's a contract name. Then there's the function we wanna call. And yes, push the button. Heck yeah, and I don't think we have any arguments. And we have this write async that's gonna come out of here. And we'll just call it push it, push it, yeah, yeah. All right, and that's what we're gonna call in our button, right? We just put that right, put that dog right in there and see what happens. All right, now what happens if I push this? A transaction is complete and our, and our 
our push, our count goes up, okay? So imagine with me that you are a blockchain developer. You've kind of tinkered with and learned Solidity. Uh, you're getting ready to write your, your next product. You get in here, you, you do an MPX creator, you bring down scaffold ETH, you get in here and you code up kind of what you want your contract to work, how you want it to work. Maybe you don't quite know if it's gonna be mapping or an array of structs and you have to kind of get in here and you know, put, it, put it in paper and deploy it and see it locally before you're, you're finally happy with it. But let's say you're happy with it now. Let's say you've built a push the button game or something hopefully much better than, than what I've created here. But this shows that you can tinker and then have something that's uh, ready. You can you know, create a beautiful example UI here. This, this is like using a greeting. If I do that, it's gonna, yeah. Ooh, let's do uh, protocol bird. Yeah, yeah, send it, yeah. So you can create a nice little UI. I think there's a block explorer here. Shout out to my homie Port for making that. All right, so let's just say we've got our app ready to go, right? We've deployed it locally, we've messed around, we, we're ready to put it out there and start getting uh, some people to use it, start getting users, right? So I'm going to uh, yarn deploy, but this time I'm gonna go to some public network, right? We can go to any network we want, any EVM compatible network. Uh, let's see, I'm going to need to first yarn generate, which will create uh, an account that I can fund. And uh, let's see, where do we wanna go? Any, any, uh, any Gnosis someone said? Yes, okay, let's, let's try deploying the Gnosis. Okay, so what I'm gonna need to do is fund this account with a little Gnosis. Notice that I'm not copy pasting private keys or anything like that. Basically, I've generated an account and it's hidden and it's in the gitignore file. So a new developer is gonna have a really hard time committing that PK to GitHub, which we see developers do all the time. Okay, so I'm gonna open up a punk wallet built with scaffold ETH and then I'm going to scan this and I'm gonna send some money to my deployer. What, it's gonna cost like nothing, right? A fraction of a cent. I'm gonna send 10 cents to this guy, but he doesn't even need 10 cents, I don't think. Okay, yarn, deploy, dash, dash, network, Gnosis. Let's see what happens here. Please work. Exactly, yep, exactly, yep. I generated a de deployer account by doing yarn generate, and then I funded it with my wallet just so it has enough money to deploy, exactly. Yep, yep, yep. Please ask those questions too, like shout that out. You, you were, at, yeah, I, I need to repeat the question to the microphone, but I think that was clear in, in how it worked. Uh, okay, so it looks like we're deploying. Looks like something is happening here. Yes, okay, so our contract is now on Gnosis, but we need to make one other change. You'll notice if we go back to our app, it still is pointed at Foundry. What we wanna do here is go to our scaffold config, and we want to set the chain to Gnosis. And I'm gonna do one other thing, I'm gonna speed up the poll time. Uh, two other things, and I'm gonna allow you to have burner wallets for some reason. We don't usually do that, but I'm gonna do that here. So now, I just, by, by changing that one config file, now my entire app is pointed at Gnosis. You'll notice that if I click on somebody's address here, uh, let's see, how do I click? If I click on this address here, any address all throughout your app is wired up to whatever network you're pointed to. So since I pointed it at the local foundry, all of the addresses will link to my local blockchain. But as soon as I point that thing at Gnosis, now all of the addresses are now automatically pointed at Gnosis. So your app can kind of change really quickly uh, as you build it out. But let's just say our app is ready to go. It's been pushed zero times. Uh, I, can, I can push it and that's going to create a tra transaction on Gnosis. It's going to uh, increment that value in the block. Oh, that's not good. What was that? Let's see, we should see the transaction happening uh, in Gnosis chain. There we go, and it's two pushes. Okay, so we can push the thing. Okay, now I'm gonna do a yarn Vercel YOLO prod, which will push our front end out to Vercel. And so when this finishes, let's see, yes, okay. Push the button. 
And this will take a minute to load too, so uh, we, we can kind of jump back to our trading game. That's why I wanted to have these distractions so we have other things, especially since the, if the internet's not gonna work. Okay, so this is gonna deploy. So, so we tinkered with our smart contract. We kind of got our footing. Then we decided we were gonna make a click the button app. We created a counter. We created a button that lets us increment that counter. We made sure it works locally. Then we deployed that to Gnosis chain. Good shout out in the crowd. Could have been any other L2 or EVM compatible chain. And now we're gonna put a front end out there that will allow anybody here to basically just go to the URL, fund it with a little Gnosis and click the button and you'll be able to increment the, the button in the, in the smart contract. So that's gonna take a second to load. Let's see how our shitcoin trading is going. Tomo is, is still on top, is that right? Number two, you got 49.52, is that, is, that, uh, is that live? I feel like I wanna reload it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for anybody who came in late, there's this game you can go play by scanning this QR code. You'll get an app built by Scaffold, or built with Scaffold E2, built by Build Guild members, McToady and Damu and crew. Uh, and we have these three DEXs, we have these scripts running that are uh, changing the price, but basically they're really, they're trading against the DEX to adjust the price randomly. So you just get like these random uh, coins and it's avocado coin, banana coin, and uh, tomato coin. And you can buy and sell those basically. Buy low, sell high, it, it, it uh, fluctuates. And uh, let's see, let's see how our leaderboard is going. Oh, it's not going. It's not going well. So the, the shitcoin trading game obviously isn't a fun toy. Uh, what we're doing is we're creating this event wallet where we can have uh, players come in and play some kind of engaging blockchain game that ends up teaching them how to custody their own funds, teaching them how to use different chains, teaching them how to just interact with smart contracts. Uh, so we found that if we do some intricate game like land ownership with Harburger taxes. There's like four nerds in the room that wanna play that and everybody else doesn't give a shit. So uh, what we ended up finding is, well, everyone likes trading shit coins and it does have product market fit. So we're gonna use that as like the base layer of the game. So you'll come to an event, you'll scan a QR code, you'll get dropped some funds and then you'll be able to buy and sell these coins. Uh, but all of that is just for like the normies in the room, like anybody can do that. And then we'll have some kind of extra game on top of that where there's land that you could buy, Harburger taxes, and then that land will generate some of these same tokens that are being used in the game. So we'll kind of have an economy within the game and then we'll build fun things on top of it. So you can still bring like your normie boyfriend, girlfriend, and you can still have maybe some smart contract game that, that you play along with us. I, I wish my, our leaderboard was uh, looking better here. It's not, actually, this might be... Let's see, we'll, we'll, we'll just let this leaderboard uh, load a little bit longer. Let me see if I have any closing notes here uh, and then we can ask questions if there are any questions. Oh, I wanted to talk about uh, Optimism's retro PGF. So we, uh, we like to think of the Build Guild as a public good. We're mostly funded by the EF, uh, but we are definitely like looking for more partnerships in terms of funding and and grant funding, and the way we're doing it is using these uh, like cohort streams. So we have this uh, special smart contract that lets us fund developers similar to how the Build Guild streams work. Earlier that I was talking about, you withdraw and they fill up and then you can kind of be nights and weekends. Uh, but these streams come out of a collective uh, smart contract. So we can have one smart contract deployed and we can say, we want more people to build on Starkware and, or Cairo or something like that, right? And then we throw some developers at that and they go build some things and they withdraw from that stream. And it's kind of almost like a bounty system where the developers can check in. And that's how we're, we're partnering with other organizations, trying to get some of, uh, you know, a little bit of diversity in terms of our funding in case the EF doesn't want to fund us anymore or, you know, eventually the EF steps, steps back. Uh, we'd, we'd like to have more ecosystem partners and we use these like cohort streams to do that. So if you look up like Austin Griffith cohort streams or look me up, my, my Twitter uh, is at Austin Griffith, my Telegram's the same, hit me up. Uh, definitely looking for big partners in the space that want to get more developers working on their stuff and at the same time we kind of combo move in. We have a bunch of developers that we're, that we're teaching along the way. Uh, and so Optimism gave uh, big retro PGF 
the retro PGF round two from Optimism, we ended up getting like $200,000 from them. It was huge. It was like a ton of funding for us, which is awesome. And that funding then, if you look at it, you know, goes in, spreads out to all these different developers in a really cool way. Uh, but then what we started to see is there's this, uh, there's this channel where a bunch of Build Guild developers are building the next uh, tool. Like Optimism put out this RPF I don't know, request I don't know. It was a request that someone build things. And that is that, yeah, that's what it was. And Build Guild, before that proposal even went up, Build Guild was already building this thing. They were using Scaffold ETH2, a bunch of developers in a chat room are building this tool. So hopefully, if everything works out right, the retro PGF3 round tool that they use for voting will, be, will have been funded retroactively on accident almost by the PGF2 round. So we'll see if that works out, but uh, that's just, just another combo move coming out of, uh, of the Build Guild. I think that's mostly, yes. So we have in the Build Guild, uh, I would say there's like less than 100 that are actively getting lots of streaming, but there's probably about 800 that have completed the speed run and made it into Build Guild and are in some way contributing. Here it is, here's my, here, here we go, three heroes capital, nice. <laughs> that's, uh, that's our winner is three heroes capital, followed by Fugu and Gabby, congratulations. Thank you guys. <laughs> Any, any last questions? I don't even know if I have time for questions. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, yeah, so open questions for sure. It starts at a half, it starts at a half ETH per month. So that's the smallest stream that we have is basically you get uh, 0.5 ETH a month and then all the way up to some of them are making like 1.5 ETH to 2 ETH per month. Really like not like maybe that's a salary sort of, but I mean a, a comparable salary. It's definitely not a salary. Uh, I'm not paying people salaries like this is a withdraw. It's mostly part time. Yeah, yeah. We don't we don't have a lot of like full time build guild members. Yeah, yeah, for sure. No, we see it happen, but the, the network, like our community is so small and so connected that like it's hard to civil attack a Zoom call, right? Like I can see your face eventually, or even if you're a non, I can hear your voice and we communicate a few times that it's enough to know, but you're right. Like this is the kind of thing that you technically could civil attack. And we have people, we have had people civil attack speedrun Ethereum where they just created a bunch of accounts assuming that like maybe we'll do like a coin drop to all the people that signed up or something like that. But uh, once you get to this builder phase, we give you uh, a scholarship to go get an ENS address. You kind of like, you, you become a person here and it's pretty, pretty clear that like these are mostly not Sybils, like, yeah. It, different people come through at different rates, right? We'll get an experienced developer and they'll be able to go through all of this stuff in a matter of a couple of weeks and they're either building their own product or they disappear and I never see them again. And then I see them at a conference, you know, a year later and they're like, hey, you got me started. Now I'm building X, some protocol or something like that. Also, there's some noobs that just hang out and they're always here and they're kind of contributing back, but maybe they'll never create a product, but they're more like, you know, I'll, I'll go work at Ave or I'll go work at a place in the in the ecosystem. And so so we do have some noobs that come through, uh, but it's varying levels and uh, the really good ones go through very quickly. Any other questions? Yeah. So is, is Build Guild collaborating? I, I think I missed that. Is it open to collaborations? Is that what you're asking? With, within my community, within this community, or within the greater Ethereum community? This community. Oh yeah, so we, this, within this community, we meet like every other Friday, I put on a dumb bow tie, we hit record, and everyone shows off what they're working on. So there's some community events, but a lot of it just happens in Telegram. A lot of it is just like, hey, like I'll YOLO into the chat, you know, Optimism has this new, RPF coming out, it'd be really cool if we could build these things. And that's, that's like the extent of where I go with it is I just YOLO a bunch of things in a chat and then kind of things emerge around those needs. Cool, thank you. All right, good to go, yes. 
Yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah. Uh, uh, so here, let's let's go do it. <laughs> so if I do a yarn, uh, oh wait, our our, our push the button app is live. If you go to push the button app, you will find our live app that we deployed just now. And I can also do like a yarn deploy. Let's let's see if base works. Network base, right? Uh, and it would deploy the same contract to base and overwrite things. I don't have any money. It's going to complain that like I don't have the funds. But yes, it's that easy. Just dash dash network mainnet dash dash network optimism. The what? Yes, yes. Uh, it, it, but it's different because you have to have a different API key for different Ether scans or some like. Yes, but with a big star that like you have to do a little bit of extra work getting an API key for that specific one and plugging it in. But if I do a yarn verify dash dash network gnosis, no way it's going to work because gnosis has gnosis scan, right? Let's see what happens here. Let's see what happens. And, and also our smart contract is here. We could go look at it and see if it's verified. Uh, contract. Nope, <laughs> not yet. Let's see, but this, this move right here might do it, but I'm guessing I'm going to need an API key for Gnosis scan, and it's going to yell at me about that. You don't? OK. 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 Cool. Any other questions? But lots of things like that is what it's nice for, because we've gone through building a ton of things with it already. So when you get to that moment where you're building your own thing, you're like, shit, now I've got to go do this. We've, we've already been there, and we've thought it through, and there's probably a command that will get you a lot closer to it. <laughs> Whoa, looks like it tried. OK, cool. All right, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. If yeah. you have an airdrop, I can yeah, send yeah. it right now. Yeah, thank you. I'm not sure that you're the one who did it. Yeah, so uh, else in Griffiths and Telegram the same, no? Yep, yep. So I don't know. I did a text to your number. Just my request question. So I'm just applying it to contract. Yeah, question. yep. When you upload the front end, uh -huh. is it like data? Yeah, yeah. So within your front end, uh, you can select what network you want, and then it will look at all your deployments and find that. And so there was one thing. Just, I I was on Heart or Foundry, and I went and made a change to Gnosis. Like there's there's a config file that says where you want your front end to be pointed in terms of network, and I went and changed that. So it's just like you change one thing. They could, yeah. If you check this few scripts, deploy, update, etc., they automatically add uh, deploy smart contract to config to front end. Yeah, check it out. Thank you. I still can find it. Oh, maybe I need to be, like, I was like... No, if you just uh, open the uh, airdrop and... Uh, ax really? Contacts only. There we go again. Oh, man, I'm going to get all sorts of stuff for the next 10 minutes. Sorry? I'm going to get all sorts of stuff sent to me, wandering around here, open. She can't ask you. You? Mm hmm. Oh, no, I'm trying to MacBook. Uh oh. Ah, post. There it is. Yeah. Accept. How's it going? Arius? Boston. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Cool. Yeah. It's mm hmm. Yep. Uh, a lot of times what you want to do is bring that stuff into a scaffold. But if you create a scaffold ETH build, you can copy that stuff in. But we don't have an automatic way to do that yet. You're saying, like, I have an existing foundry. How do I get scaffold ETH into it? E yeah, usually the way it works is you create a scaffold ETH and you bring in your foundry stuff, which is kind of a pain. That's the best way to do it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Are you hiring? Are you hiring or no? I phone is a kind of magic. Yeah. Yeah. So we might have no Yep. 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 
exactly. Yep, speedrunethereum.com is the place to start. Yep. Okay, let's make it now. The way you just we'll publish it, it somewhere. Yeah. And give yeah. It a link. yeah. And oh, yeah. now we work for Gnosis, yeah. so we really yeah. just need to collaborate with this guy. Oh, okay, cool. So we'll take Awesome. See you around. See you. Do you want to get the shit? Uh, it's something, yeah. Where do we call it?